Is there safety in numbers? Have the Cowboys fixed their Achilles heel in free agency? One month away from the NFL draft. Let's talk about it next on The Blitz. Ah, yes, it's starting to get very interesting here at the Star in Frisco. And this is the Blitz, your Dallas Cowboys report. Bill Jones along with Kyle Yeomans. And one month from Monday, it's the NFL draft. It gets started on April 29th this year. And the Cowboys very busy in free agency. It is a great time of the year. And I tore up my NCAA bracket <laughs> a long time ago. I'm more interested in the Elite Eight that the Cowboys have gotten in free agency. Hey, there you go. How about that? Week one, and I guess the first round was really the defensive line. Round number two, it was time to address the safety spot and the defensive back. So, hey, maybe there's a little bit of a, a, a rhythm, a formula to this whole thing. Yeah, if, if we, they just can have a sweet 16, and then we'll see what the final four is. But let's start with three of the elite eight in free agency so far for the Cowboys in the defensive backfield. A week ago, last weekend, Keanu Neal, the former Atlanta Falcon, most recently, DeMonte Kazee, a former Atlanta Falcon, and Jaron Curse, a former Detroit Lion and Minnesota Viking. How about we start with Keanu Neal, uh, Kyle, and, uh, and first off, where we anticipate he will be implemented in Dan Quinn's defense. Exactly. Whenever he was signed, he was at least thought to be a safety signee. However, he's going to start off with the linebacker, says Coach Mike McCarthy, which he'll be kind of a hybrid linebacker safety sort of deal with the will spot, and I think overall that's the best place for him. He's a guy who is a good solid tackler. He's decent in coverage, but he's more likely to be effective covering tight ends, and that's where we've really seen the Cowboys struggle in the past in terms of their linebacking core with Leighton Vander Esch and Jalen Smith. He's the top signee so far out of this free agent class. Of course, he was somebody that was rumored for the Cowboys for quite some time because of his connection to Dan Quinn. And then, of course, he now is joined by a former teammate in DeMonte Kazi and it signed late on Thursday. And after his Wednesday visit where he was alongside Malik Hooker, those two guys both coming off of Achilles, both had very similar resumes, but Kazi was the one that ultimately ended up being signed. He's a player that's going to come in play a lot of that free safety look. He might be your starting free safety next to Donovan Wilson and somebody to look out for. Somebody that should back up because he, at least at the moment, would probably be Jaron Curse out of Detroit initially. Somebody who has had some off the field issues, a very long rangey safety. Somebody who's a good tackler and Mike McCarthy even talked about it during his press conference talking about how when you hug the guy he feels like he gets swallowed up and that's not a normal thing for Mike McCarthy overall. He, he said he likes those 6'4 guys <laughs> and I could see a guy like Curse in, in sub packages he could be special could teams be, well special teams as well in sub packages they could even play him as a hybrid linebacker as well no kind of like what they're uh, planning for Keanu Neal. The other bit of news that came out of Mike McCarthy's uh, press conference earlier in the week uh, is the fact that uh, Tyrone Crawford apparently is uh, retiring uh, from football. Uh, the coach kind of let that out of the bag. Yeah, a little bit. He kind of just threw it out there and, and let it be known. 23 sacks over nine years with the Cowboys and somebody that's going to be dearly missed in that Cowboys locker room and throughout training camp and the, enti the entire defensive line, of course, very respected by everyone in that locker room. And, and Tyrone Crawford's a big part of that. He's certainly someone that the Cowboys will miss seeing 98 on the field. Yeah, not only on the field, but also in the locker room as a leader. And I think uh, Brent Urban, who we talked about last week, he's probably that guy who has that position flex on the defensive line who uh, takes Tyrone Crawford's spot as far as on the field for this team. All right, we got much to get to on this edition of the Blitz. Up next, Mickey Spagnola joins the show. And what is the biggest free agent acquisition the Cowboys have made so far this year? The Dallas Cowboys Blitz is brought to you by AT&T, the official 5G innovation partner of the Dallas Cowboys. And by the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. Tour AT&T Stadium, the home of the Dallas Cowboys. Tours are available daily. For details, visit attstadium.com slash tours.
This segment is brought to you by AT&T, the official 5G innovation partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Lots of comings and goings here at the Star in Frisco and elsewhere around the National Football League as we approach the two-week mark of NFL free agency. We welcome you back here to the Blitz, your Dallas Cowboys report. Bill Jones with Kyle Yeomans. And some free agents are just hanging out there in limbo. How about the Cowboys free agents who may or may not come back? You know, earlier in the week, there were reports out there that the Cowboys perhaps were out on Alden Smith, the pass rusher. But then Mike McCarthy has his press conference on Thursday, and it sounds like he's leaving the door ajar just a little bit. Yeah, he certainly did say that to the media on Thursday, speaking that, hey, we haven't actually moved on from Jalen, or excuse me, from Alden Smith. And, well, looking at Alden Smith and maybe his production, they're trying to figure out just where he fits. Had th four sacks in the first three games of the season. He had a big fumble recovery against Cincinnati. But outside of the last 13 games, he had only one sack. So I, I think overall for Alden Smith, it's a big question of mostly where is he going to fit for this defense? They've already seen some defensive line signees. You saw the emergence of Randy Gregory on that edge spot. So old, overall, it's just where does he fit and how much money is it going to cost to bring a guy like him back? And, of course, they already have signed Terrell Basham, an edge rusher, Brent Urban, who has some of that position flexibility as well. How about on the offensive line, Joe Looney, a guy who started uh, so many games for the Cowboys after Travis Frederick went down, but you got Tyler Biotish now who figures to be the starting center going forward, and Looney's out there. Yeah, you would think that the depth of the offensive line would be one of the priorities for the Cowboys this offseason, but really they've taken their time addressing that overall. Of course, the Ty Niseki signing on the edge spots, but Joe Looney is one of those interior guys that could potentially be a good depth piece. 13 games last year, 12 of those were starts. Not all of them were at center. He had a couple at the guard spot as well because of the, the revolving door that was the Cowboys offensive line. But he's another guy that at least at the po at this point, it's unknown about his future, but it looks more and more unlikely as we get along that he will return to Dallas. At least that's the word around town. And now with the signing of DeMonte Kazee to go along with Donovan Wilson, where does this leave Xavier Woods? We haven't heard anything on his front in free agency. Well, and that's, that's the oddity of it all, is whenever Xavier Woods was set to hit the free agent market, you were expecting a ton of interest. You were expecting him to be a big fish in a small pond, but outside of really the Cowboys maybe saying, hey, you can come back here to Dallas, there hasn't been a ton of interest in Xavier Woods. He was ranked number 80 in PFF's safety rankings last year in his overall grade, which if you want a little bit of a reference, Donovan Wilson was 15. So maybe teams looking at things like that, looking at the tape, and they're a little worried overall about Woods. And then uh, Sean Lee, the door is open for Sean Lee to return. It and Mike McCarthy was very vague about that, of whether or not he's going to return. Is he going to play football again? I think that's really kind of the biggest question when it comes to Sean Lee. Of course, he's meant a ton to this Cowboys organization over the past decade, and they would, I think, like to have him back, but it may not be as a player, it may be as a coach. All right, we shall see on that in the coming days or weeks. And when we come back here on The Blitz, the highlights of Mike McCarthy's press conference on Thursday. This segment was brought to you by AT&T, the official 5G innovation partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Well, I mean, I was, I was actually, uh, I was in Florida when the deal was was finally completed. Uh, it's, it's a lot easier to do cartwheels on the sand, I'd say that. Um, <laughs> Rich is having a hell of a visual over there right now. But, uh, yeah, no, I was, I was obviously very excited. I, I think that, you know, he is definitely the keystone of, of moving forward uh, as a football team. So uh, I, was, I was very excited about that. And, and that's a visual all of us are trying to purge from our uh, memory bank. Cartwheels on the sand. Here's Mickey Spagnola, fresh from the beach, in his own cartwheels on the sand to yeah. break down the Mike McCarthy press conference from the other day. So we welcome you back here to uh, the Blitz. First things first, it was great having an in-person gathering with the head coach. Boy, it's been a while, hasn't it? I mean, for everybody. Now, I know he did something at the Combine, right? But for everybody to be in the same room with him, that would have been the first time since we talked to him upstairs in the conference room 
Over it was about two ago. weeks after uh, he, his announced uh, hiring. All right, let's uh, talk about another announced hiring a couple of months ago. That would be the new defensive coordinator for this team, Dan Quinn. And after hearing McCarthy talk about him and just and seeing what the Cowboys have done on the defensive side of the football in free agency, is Dan Quinn their biggest free agent acquisition? Absolutely. And, and, he, and it needs to be, too, Bill, after the way this defense played. You know, they've signed, brought in eight uh, free agents uh, from outside the building, three defensive linemen, uh, three safeties, a uh, deep snapper, along with an offensive tackle. The best hire they've made so far is bringing in Dan Quinn uh, as the defensive coordinator. And this wasn't one of these things where they got to the end of the season, they decided to move on from Mike Nolan, and then Mike McCarthy had to look around and go, hmm, who am I going to hire? He knew who he was hiring once I think Dan Quinn got fired as the head coach in Atlanta. He had some background with him. This guy made his bones in the NFL to get that head coaching job because he was a good defensive line coach and a good defensive coordinator. He needs to make a difference with this defense. And, of course, a couple of his former uh, Falcons players among those uh, free agents, which we've talked about on the show already. All right, let's uh, flip it over to the offensive side of the football. And McCarthy did was asked about his offensive tackles. Of course, Tyron Smith missing 14 games last year, Lyle Collins the whole year. How do you think they're set at tackle now? I'll tell you what. That was probably the best news of the press conference. Now, we have the ability to watch these guys when they do their rehab on the field, and I've been watching Lale Collins uh, do his rehab, and he's moving awfully well after having the hip surgery that cost him all last season, and even Tyron Smith is running really well. So to me, the big question going forward, and especially into the draft with a bunch of uh, really nice offensive tackles available, maybe for the Cowboys, that if these two guys are ready to go, then this offense is ready to go. That has to be, they have to know that. And they know what they have there. So again, if you have your two starting offensive tackles, you're figuring Zach Martin's gonna be good, then you're good to go. And Mike McCarthy basically seemed awfully optimistic, Bill, that these guys are good to go uh, and this offense can can take off if that offensive line is whole. And again, my other point is if they get one of those guys that's going to be out for a period of time like last year, the backup offensive tackle, Zach Martin. Don't mess around. Go. All right, Just I got, put him I got, there. I got 15 seconds for you on a backup quarterback. Andy Dalton, of course, gone to Chicago. Right. What, what do you think? I think I like to hear the fact that they've talked to veteran guys. I don't. They're, they're not sitting still here uh, with Garrett Gilbert, Cooper Rush. They're awfully. They're looking for a veteran guy. Mike pointed that out. So I think in a couple of weeks, we may see one of those guys signed. All right. Our thanks to Mickey Spagnola, DallasCowboys.com. And the Blitz continues in a moment. We turn our attention to the NFL draft. And how about that safety position in the draft? Defensive coordinator Dan Quinn has some reinforcements when it comes to the safety position. And as we welcome you back to the Blitz, the Dallas Cowboys report, we take a look at the safety spot in the upcoming NFL draft. Are the Cowboys in a position to still spend pretty highly as we welcome in David Hellman from DallasCowboys.com, our resident draft expert. And it's been quite some time, Dave, since the Cowboys have spent high on a safety. Can they do that again or are they in a position to do that again here in this upcoming draft? I'll just be very diplomatic and say I hope so, Kyle, because uh, this is if you follow the Cowboys draft process at all, you know, this is a yearly debate. This is a team that has needed good safety play for quite some time. They've been reluctant to spend on it. Uh, bringing in Keanu Neal and DeMonte Casey is a great step. But, you know, these are small, more like prove it deals could still use some long term stability. They haven't used a first round pick on a safety in almost 20 years. So I kind of feel like I need to see it to believe it. But, you know, they have so many of these picks at the top of the draft, and there are some good players out there. I'd, I'd love to see it, but seeing is believing. Since the turn of the century, just one pick for the Cowboys in the first two rounds have been a safety. But if they're going to have to spend high on a safety this year, Dave, what are some of those prospects that stick out to you as somebody that really could be worthy of a high, a high pick? 
Yeah, you know, it's it's bad timing a little bit for the Cowboys just because there isn't a safety at the top of this draft that's probably worth taking top 10. Doesn't mean there aren't good players, though. Uh, you know, a guy that gets a lot of mention, deservedly so, is Trevon Merrig. Um, if I had to guess, I, the, the TCU safety, actually the Jim Thorpe Award winner, likely going to be the first safety off the board. 10's probably a little too rich, but hey, maybe the Cowboys trade down or maybe Merrig slips, but... I would be pretty surprised if this guy isn't the first one off the board uh, when, when draft night comes around. Now, are there some guys a little bit later on in the draft in terms of the safety position that you could potentially yes. look at? Oh, I can already see yes. you're getting excited yes. about this. Oh, yeah. I mean, Look, Trevon Merrick's a great player, and we're being nice by mentioning him. I don't think the value lines up for the Cowboys to draft him, but let's talk about my guy, Richie grant the ucf safety i remember our friend on the draft show jeff cavanaugh brought him up back in january i sat down and watched his tape the man is a ball hawk like he just gets the ball he knows where it is he's comfortable in coverage he hits kyle you remember he was at the senior bowl in mobile alabama back in january the guy's a stud man and if he's there at pick number 44 i would be elated to see the Cowboys call his name. Safe to say he's one of those high five picks that I think you and I would both be high fiving socially distant, of Absolutely. course, in the in the war of room course. if that uh, that ends up being the pick at 44. Now, outside of Richie Grant, if you wanted to go a little bit deeper, let's go even further into the draft. Almost day three. Is there a guy that sticks out there that the Cowboys could potentially bring in as a project? Absolutely. And, you know, you kind of you start to talk about again, you know, they did this with J.J. Wilcox. You're talking about a lesser impact. But a guy that I really like a lot is Andre Cisco, the Syracuse uh, safety. Honestly, it's funny and no disrespect to Trevon Merrick. He won the Thorpe Award. Andre Cisco had seven interceptions last season. And you consider, you know, a shortened college football season makes that all the more impressive. This is a guy I think Maybe he lasts to day three. Maybe you get him late on day two. I'd love to see it. Um, so, yeah, at every stage of the draft, there are guys you can talk about. I would love to see this guy's name get called. I didn't, you know, I didn't tell our producers to pull up footage of him, but <laughs> Merrick's uh, partner in the backfield, Ardarius uh, Washington as well, is another guy I'd love to see them draft. So plenty of solid prospects in this class. But Richie Grant, that's mm. the guy I've got my eye on. Yeah, I feel like there, there's a little bit of uh, at least a will from you to get that one done. <laughs> David Hellman giving yeah. you four safety names to talk about when the upcoming draft hits on April 29th. When we come back on the Blitz, we'll talk a little bit more about the DBs in the draft. What's next for Caleb Farley after some news broke on his health issues when we return on the Blitz? Dallas Cowboys Blitz was brought to you by AT&T, the official 5G innovation partner of the Dallas Cowboys. And by the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. Tour AT&T Stadium, the home of the Dallas Cowboys. Tours are available daily. For details, visit attstadium.com slash tours. These two have emerged as the top two cornerbacks in this NFL draft. Alabama's Patrick Sertan, South Carolina's J.C. Horn. Look how they blew up their pro days. Those are some impressive numbers. What do you think, Kyle Yeomans? Well, I think there's good news, and I think there's bad news when it comes to Patrick Sertan. The good news is whenever you thought maybe he wasn't going to run very quick and his tape doesn't necessarily show that he's the fastest corner in the draft, he comes out and he runs a 4-4-6 at his pro day, and he puts up good numbers, 39-inch version. Vertical, which is a solid number for his size. But I think the bad news is for the Cowboys is you thought you were going to get him at 10. Maybe his pro day is too good for a, a 10th overall prospect. He may be somebody going a little bit earlier in the draft. And, of course, his dad uh, played, was a three-time pro bowler in the NFL. And so is J.C. Horn's dad, Joe <laughs> Horn. Of course, he played on the other side of the football at wide receiver. How about Caleb Farley? Farley's a guy that was in that mix, but now he needs back surgery. Yeah, it's pretty unfortunate news and terrible timing for Caleb Farley, who was thought to be the number one prospect at cornerback in the upcoming NFL draft. Instead, he's going to have to have a herniated disc repaired in his back. It's a surgery that'll keep him out until mid-July, so he shouldn't miss a ton of the NFL offseason, but this will 
really deter different franchises from using a top 10 pick on Farley, which is ultimately where he would have gone. The other thing that kind of pairs with that is he hasn't played football since 2019, opted out of the 2020 season, and now the back issue, the combination of the two is not too good. Yep, but the uh, Cowboys obviously have a pressing need for a starting cornerback, and don't be surprised if a cornerback is the guy that they take at number 10 in the first round. That does it for the Blitz this week. For Kyle Yeomans, I'm Bill Jones, and we will see you again next week on the Blitz, your Dallas Cowboys report.